My friends, what was and is that ne National Eucharistic Congress? And how does it matter to us today? It was a spark. It was a revival for our church in the United States. And a revival isn't something we do. It's God stirring up the hearts of his people to respond in their prayer with the Holy Spirit filled with zeal, grace, and setting our hearts on his love to be sent out to the world. That was last Sunday. If we go back to 1947, some of you were around. There was a Eucharistic gathering in Buffalo here in our diocese because we were celebrating our 100th anniversary. 500,000 people gathered. It was the biggest gathering of a religious denomination to this time around the Lord. And this national Eucharistic movement was a joyful expectation that came from the grassroots to the divine invitation to once again unite us. Unite us as a people, as a church, around the source and the summit of our faith in the celebration of the Eucharist. And it's through that that God begins to heal, to renew, and to unify his church. I pointed out that we have four people here that were there and their hearts were set on fire. I'm not going to ask them to give you a witness talk. It's in the bulletin. Read it. That means the pastor section, sometimes you overlook that. Read it. All right? And to hear their words. I mean, I was in two places at once. I was in Jamaica, and now I'm listening to the conferences from that Congress, that Eucharistic Congress. And they brought fabulous speakers about our faith. Awesome speakers. Watch them on YouTube. Just query Eucharistic Congress 2024, and they'll be there. Mother Olga, this little nun about this high, gave us four examples of Eucharistic miracles. How she went into the hospital with a child that was one pound and knew that there was no hope and took the Eucharist and laid it in with that child. The child's 13 years old now and is living a good life. Somebody from Mass this morning stopped me outside and said, my child was one pound, five, uh, five ounces. And she introduced me to her son. Praise be Jesus for the things that God does. Father Mike Schultz, he talked to us about that on this altar, every time we gather at that doxology, you are at Calvary. And God is pouring out his life on you in his bread and in the wine that strengthens us to live out this call. Jonathan Romney, who plays Jesus in The Chosen, was one of the speakers. And they invited him last year, last week. They're filming series five, and they were doing The Last Supper. And he said how profound it is to speak those words. 
and to know what happened. Christophonic challenged us to a deeper holiness by living out the faith. Bishop Barron told us that, hello, you're called to be saints. Live as saints and be a witness to our world. And it was from there that Eucharistic celebration with Christ in their midst that they were sent forth as a new Pentecost to our world to announce the good news. My dear friends, there was a survey that was taken a few years ago that shocked our bishops out of their minds because the Pew survey said that they polled Catholics and 70% of our people don't believe in the real presence. It's a symbol. It's something that we do. Wow. Wow. That's not what we do. It's not what we do. My dear friends, it's about what God does for us. Let's look at today's readings. We break from our series of, of the gospel that we're listening to this year. And we put it on pause as we begin for the next five weeks to tell about the series of the bread of life, about Jesus being that Eucharist for his church and what it means. In our first reading today, the prophet Eliza has 20 loaves and feeds a hundred because he gives thanks to God and God does the miracle to feed his people in the Old Testament. In today's reading, Jesus is gathering his disciples, his followers. They're on the Mount of the Beatitudes. He's teaching them what it means to be and to bring about the kingdom of God. And he notices that his people are hungry. And he's concerned and he has pity on them. And he asked Philip, Philip, how can we feed these people? And Philip doesn't know, you know, this is too much. This is too big. And then Andrew, who's Andrew? Does anybody know? The brother of who? Yeah, I got on Peter, yes. Who did Andrew take Peter to? The man we believe in, Jesus. Because he heard his words and he said to Peter, you need to meet this man. This is the man who this is all about. And so Andrew today looks out into the congregation and sees this young child with two fish, five loaves. And they say, well, what can this do? If you read some of the religious texts of our time, they diminish what this event is all about. They say that the people there shared with what they had and they were taken care of. That's the ways of our world. What happened that day? Jesus took two fish and five loaves. He gave thanks, he blessed them, and he shared them. And it fed the 5,000. I'm looking at our congregation. We could all get together. We would be 500 here. That would be five times as many of us being fed 
from two fish and five loaves becomes that miracle, that miracle that God provides for his people. But it's also a sign of Eucharist. Because in the Gospel of John, John doesn't have the words of the institution of Eucharist like Matthew, Mark, and Luke have. Do you remember what he does at the Last Supper in John's Gospel? He washes the feet of his disciples. And that's the reading we have on a Holy Thursday, and that we are to exemplify Christ in our actions and take care of the needs of those around us as we break the bread and drink the cup that makes us part of that body of Christ. And so we stand in awe in awe of what really happens here in our midst. God continues to do miracles, and he feeds his people every Sunday throughout the world and every day as we come around this table and participate in that event of our salvation. But the night before he died, he took bread and took the cup, and the next day he gave his body on the cross and his blood. This becomes Calvary, and he gives his life for us. My dear friends, when I was in Jamaica last week, it changed my life. These conferences of the Eucharistic Congress changes my life. These people that came back from the conference changed my life with their excitement and joy of what we truly celebrate. And the hand of God is in all of that. You and I have to begin to recognize that and to appreciate how blessed we are as his people. My dear friends, in the next five weeks, let's, let's focus our attention on those bread of life discourses as we're lead, led deeper into that mystery of God's love for us and to remember what happens on this altar and what that bread and wine become, the body, the blood, the soul, the divinity of Christ that comes into our lives to help us with those everyday moments to live out the faith and to hold on to that promise that you and I are called to be saints and sons and daughters of Christ. But it's only by taking his body and drinking of his blood that gives us the strength and the power to be his hands, his eyes, his ears, this day as we reach out to one another living that faith of bringing about the kingdom of god <laughs>